King Ethelston was born in around 894, when his father Edward was around 20 years old. At that time, his father was a prince, the son of King Alfred the Great, who ruled as king of the Anglo-Saxons. Alfred died in 899, and Edward became king of the Anglo-Saxons when Ethelston was about five years old. In 924, King Edward died, and Ethelston, by then aged around 30, became king. He reigned for roughly 15 years, dying in 939, when he was about 45 years old. Let's take a look at our English rulers chart to see where he fits in. Here he is, grandson of Alfred the Great, reigning around 230 years before Richard I, or Richard the Lionheart as he was known, reigned over England. Just over a century before Ethelston took over, England had been divided up into four kingdoms, Mercia, Wessex, Northumbria and East Anglia, and prior to that, it had been divided up into seven kingdoms, those four plus Kent, Sussex and Essex. Mercia, roughly where the Midlands are now, had historically been the dominant of those four kingdoms. However, when Ethelston's great-great-grandfather, Egbert, came to the Wessex throne in 802, and then when his son Ethelwulf took over in 839, the tide was turning. Within less than a hundred years, those old kingdoms had vanished, leaving just Wessex. One of the things that finally united those disparate kingdoms was the invading heathen or Viking army, which conquered and ruled vast areas of England. The Vikings started their invasion in the 860s, and they named the area of England they ruled Danelaw, because the people living there were subject to their Danish law rather than that of any Anglo-Saxon kingdom. Efforts to expel this army would last decades. So it was significant that Ethelston continued what his predecessors had started by conquering the last remaining Viking stronghold of York in 927. When he'd achieved that, three years after being crowned King of the Anglo-Saxons, Ethelston effectively united all of England and became the first King of England. Let's take a quick look at his earlier life. As mentioned, Ethelston ascended to the throne following the death of his father, Edward the Elder, who we covered in our previous video. Though Ethelston was Edward's eldest child and so his successor, Edward went on to produce 14 children from three marriages, which meant there was a power struggle when he died in 924. It's thought that Edward the Elder favoured dividing up his kingdom. His eldest son Ethelston would rule the Mercian part of the kingdom, while Elfweard, his eldest son by his second wife, would rule Wessex. The only problem with this, though, was that Elfweard died 16 days after his father. There was, it seems, opposition in Wessex to Ethelston becoming king, even after his coronation at Kingston-on-Thames in 925, partly because there were rumours he was in fact illegitimate, to the extent that a Wessex nobleman plotted to blind Ethelston, rendering him ineligible to be a king, but avoiding a charge of murder. After conquering the last Viking stronghold of York in 927, Ethelston turned his attention north and invaded Scotland in 934, possibly because the Scottish king, Constantine, violated a peace treaty. He harried the Scots all the way up to Caithness before returning to England. Three years later though, in 937, the king of Scotland, Constantine II, together with Olaf, king of Dublin, and Owen, the king of Strathclyde, invaded England. Ethelston defeated the invaders at the Battle of Brunanburh. Historians don't know where this battle took place, and over 30 different locations have been suggested. Ethelston is also known for drawing up legal codes relating to discouraging theft and corruption, and making provisions for the poor. Ethelston died childless at around the age of 45 in October 939, and he was buried at Malmesbury Abbey. As soon as Ethelston died, Olaf, the Viking King of Dublin, who Ethelston had chased from the Battle of Brunanburh, was chosen as King of York, which included part of the north of England. Ethelston's successors, his half-brothers Edmund and Edred, who in their turn were kings of England, were tied up with regaining control, as we shall see in subsequent videos. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below to receive an alert when we upload our next video. 
You can also support us via Patreon using the link below.